Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Gatehead Farm 22. But before that, this video is brought to you by Dwayne Unra and UTB. Thank you for being farm barons. So, the Gatehead Farm 22 map can be found on the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, the cross play version is available for all platforms. Meanwhile, there is a PC version that is available for PC players only. Now you may ask yourself, what makes this PC version PC version? Well, a few small things. The description overall is the same, but we have this section down here about animal grazing support, enhanced animal system, goat milk support, and the manure system capability. So all of those are what is going to make this map a PC player version only. And then there is a note down here with respect to Maze Plus. If you are going to play with Maze Plus, there are a few things you're going to need to take a look at in order to have things work as you expect. But we are going to be taking a look at the crossplay version. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to Gatehead Farm 22. Gatehead Farm is a fictional map based around Scotland. This map includes the following 137 fields, small, medium, and large, eight farms, three yards, a PGA, a dairy production point, animal campsite, New Holland dealer, animal market, and 11 cell points. All farm sheds have been made by MJ Modding. This map includes custom traffic and road textures, as well as multi terrain angle. There are additional crop types in alfalfa, beans, buckwheat, chickpeas, lentils, linseed, millet, mustard, onion, peas, poppy, rye, silage, sorghum. Spelt, triticale, and red and white clover. There are also some custom crop textures with respect to wheat, barley, oat, and canola. All crops have track damage, tire track damage. There are Elm Creek collectibles available on this map. And the cow and pig farms have manure heaps inside the sheds. All sheep need straw for bedding. There are rain sounds on the roof. Lanes are covered when snow falls and winter weather includes both rain and snow, custom made hedges, mini animated details, Scottish number plates, forestry area, custom growth counter on UK growth timings, purchasable water at the lake, river, and ocean. I don't know if I want to be buying ocean water. DLC crops are built in, and there is some custom animal food requirements, so we will make sure we go ahead and take a look at that as well. Now, this map does not have any mod requirements, but we are going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. Now, if you load this map up in farm, manager mode, or start from scratch, you will find that the main farm is built out exactly how you see it here in new farm mode. The only difference is, of course, you do not own any land, nor you have any starting machinery in those alternate game modes. If you do load this system up on a lower end system, I do have to tell you that you may be suffering from frame drops. I was getting frame rates anywhere in the low 30s and 40s here on the main starting farm. And then as I was kind of moving around the map, I was also seeing some frame drops here and there. So just be cautious if you are playing on a little bit lower end of a system that you may have to turn things down or just suffer through some frame rates. Let's go ahead and take a look at our main starting PDA. We're going to take a look at our lands overview. We start off by owning farmland ID2. That is going to be the main starting farm that can be bought in any alternate game mode for $463,982. In addition, we also own farmland ID49. And that can be bought for $202,238. Now, as the description said, there are several other farms available on this map. While the main farm, which is going to be a chicken and cow farm, we're also going to be able to find a cow-specific farm south of the main farm at Farmland ID 19. And that can be bought for $214,317. In addition, there is a sheep farm at Farmland ID 47. That can be bought for $323,836. There's also a sheep farm at Farmland ID 48, sorry. And that can be bought for $656,208. There is a horse farm at Farmland ID 53. 
vacuum ball for $356,882. There is a cow farm at Farmland ID 54, vacuum ball for $425,997. Then there is a pig farm at Farmland ID 56, and that can be bought for $586,000. $991. Now, in addition to those farms, there are two arable farms located here at Farmland ID 55 as well as 57. They can be bought for $371,884 and $390,868, respectively. As we mentioned, we do have all the standard crops available to us in FS22 on top of rye, millet, hoppy mustard beans peas lentils alfalfa red and white clover onions linseed buckwheat chickpeas silage sorghum triticale spelt and horsegrass so quite the list of additional crops available on this map let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen this is going to show us all of the viable farmlands how large those farmlands are if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included? Then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? Let's go ahead and take a look at our field calculator screen. This is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. We see we have a ton of fields, and they're going to range anywhere between less than one hectare are over four hectares in size. I don't know if I'd really go by the description of large fields at four hectares, but again, it's gonna be whatever you're used to. With respect to our crop counter, we do have, as the description said, a custom crop counter available on the map. Then of course, we're gonna have lots of Custom entries here for all of our additional crops. With respect to our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our basic crops. We also have the ability to sell our eggs, willow milk, and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. As we continue down through our base game production items, we continue to see that we do indeed have the ability to sell each and every base game production item. And those are things that I always like to see. Now, we do not have the ability to buy bulk lime, but we do have the ability to sell lime. We also have the ability to sell our stones. So if you are playing with stones enabled, you will be able to get rid of those as well. Now, with respect to the custom fill types on this map, we have horse grass, horse grass silage, and horse grass hay. Spelt, triticale, silage, sorghum, chickpeas, buckwheat, mustard, onion, millet, peas, lentils, poppy, beans, rye, linseed and alfalfa, fermented alfalfa and alfalfa hay. All of those are gonna be available for sale, pretty much everything. We also have our premium expansion crops. Those playing with the farm production pack will be able to sell your washed root crops. And those playing with the platinum expansion, well, you will be able to sell all of the platinum expansion production items as well. In fact, you can pretty much sell everything that you may have activated on the map because the premium expansion is also sellable, including if you are playing with pumps and hoses, we will be able to get rid of that separated manure. And then lastly, if you are playing with straw harvest, we will also be able to get rid of our hay and straw pellets. Start out with a decent listing of starting machinery here in new farmer mode. All of it is owned and none of it is leased. We do start out, as I said, with cow and chickens on the main farm, but we do not have any particular animals in either of those pens. This map does have contracts available. We do not own any of the production chains at the start. And this map also includes the 100 Elm Creek collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the Massey Ferguson 6718S medium tractor, as well as the John Deere 7810. We've got our Tootsfar top liner 4090H harvester. It's paired up with the 4090H header and, of course, the 4090H header trailer. We have our Karat 140TD trailer. We have a POV 5XL plow, as well as a Torino 3FX cultivator. The Amazon KG3001 Super Power Hero that is paired up then with the Sitya 3000 Super Cedar. We have the Hardy Mega 1200L fertilizer and herbicide sprayer. 
the VT-130 slurry tanker, and the Spider SP-6834 slurry applicator. We have the GMD-4411 side mower, the GF-8712 tether, and the Semez Z2-840H wind rower. The VB-3190 is going to be our round baler of choice, as well as the FarmTech DPW-1800 bale trailer. We have the Silo King TMR mixer, the Anderson Pro Chop 150 straw shredder, and the Joskin Aquatrans 7300S water tanker. We have a Q5 Quickie front loader arms. And for the front loader arms, we have the Pallet Fork Universal Bucket and Bale Spike. And then we wrap it all up with a 600 kilogram front weight. As far as mods and DLCs, this map does have custom vehicles and implements, as one might expect with all of those custom crops. So we have a custom Ropa Harvester that is going to be set up for onions with our onion header. We have the Grimmy Onion Topper that is also set up for onions. We have then a weeder that is set up to also plant down canola, horse grass, grass, and clover. And then we also have this large weeder that's also set up with clover and horse grass on top of our normal grass, sugar beet, not sugar beet, oil seed radish, and canola. And here on the starting farm, we do have a custom farmhouse that we can go into. Our sleep trigger is going to be located right up here on the second floor. We have our chicken coop where we can do 100 chickens right here beside the house. We have our food trough for our chickens, but I'll tell you what, I was not successful in really seeing anywhere marked out for the eggs for the chickens. We do have jets flying overhead. I don't know if our eggs are gonna spawn here, if we're gonna spawn over here, or really where they're gonna spawn at. So it would have been nice to have seen markers indicating that. Nice large shed here for our machinery, for bales. Over here to the left, we have two three-sided silage bunkers. A nice storage shed, again, for bales or implements. Now, as far as farms being customizable, this is a UK, Irish, Scottish map, and... Well, what we've seen with those maps in the past is that historically they're not customizable. And that holds with case on this map as well. Everything on all the farms is basically static with one exception. Typically, you can sell the animal pastures by clicking on the food or water troughs. But aside from that, the buildings themselves are going to be pretty much static on every map. So if you want to customize things, this is not going to be the map for you. We have our silo outpipe. And we have our silo dump station located right there. We have our slurry point for our cows. Our cow delivery point. 120 cows here. We have our food trough for our cows. We have our manure keep for our cows. And this is going to be our milk point once again for the cows. We have a fuel tank. And that's pretty much the main farm here. We have a maintenance trigger inside. It's not marking where the trigger is, so let's go ahead and take a look. It is going to be inside the building here. Now, before we go too far, let's go ahead and take a look at our animal food overview because this is going to show us the customizations 
for the various feeding of animals. So we have TMR, it's still going to give us 100%. We have our silage, which is also going to work with fermented alfalfa, fermented clover, and horse grass silage. Our hay for our cows is going to be either be hay, alfalfa hay, clover hay, horse grass hay, grass, clover, alfalfa, horse grass, or hay pellets. And then we have fodder, which has been added, which is going to be onion, trich cow, rye, spelt, red beets, carrots, parsnips, wheat, barley, oat, corn, potatoes, sugar beet, or sugar beet cut. Our sheep are going to accept grass, hay, alfalfa, clover, alfalfa hay, clover hay, sugar beet cut, and hay pellets. For our pigs, of course, we have pig food. We have our fairly standard base food in corn sorghum. We have fairly standard here with respect to our grain. We also have rye, trich cow, millet, and spelt added. For our proteins, we have beans and peas added. And then for our root crops, we also have then our onions, added and everything is kind of duplicated there but okay that's fine our horses we have carrots red beets and parsnips we have then oat corn barley linseed chaff sugar beet or wheat and peas for the base food grass is going to accept grass hay alfalfa clover alfalfa hay clover hay or hay pellets and then we have our entries for root crops but again these are duplicated and lastly, we have our chickens, which are going to accept not only our wheat and barley, but also corn, millet, poppy, rye, sorghum, triticale, and spelt. To continue our farm tours, we've now moved down here to the cow farm, which is to the south of the main farm at Farmland ID19. We've also gone ahead and bought all of the other farms that we've already identified. So the cow farm. Farmland ID 19. Again, it's south of the main farm. Once you buy the farm, then these triggers will then pop up as being available. So we have our milk point. We have our delivery point for 80 cows. Our slurry point. Then we have our food trough for our cows. Our straw trigger is going to be inside of there. We have our fuel point, and then we have our manure heap. And as I mentioned, we do have the Elm Creek collectibles. And there you go. Now you get to find 99 more. This map also, or this farm, not map, but farm. This farm also includes a dealer trigger, oddly enough. And that is pretty much everything we've got going on down here at farmland ID 19. It's made our way now past the main farm to farmland ID 47, which is where we're gonna have the pig farm or one of the pig farms. So we have a fuel tank, we have our main entrance gate. Some storage buildings. Then we have our straw trigger. Oh, I've been calling this pig. It's a sheep farm. Sorry about that. 90 sheep available here. We have our food trough. We have our water trough. I think we can kind of see where the grazing is set up with the the shorter grass. And then we have our wool spawn point right here. And again, if you wanted to, you could delete the triggers for the sheep, but all of these buildings, they are going to remain. Our horse pasture, which is right here. We spawn literally straddling the fence. So just be on the lookout for that. We have the entrance from the road. Some nice storage. We're gonna have our dump point for our straw. Our 
our water point or our food trough but what's what's interesting here is uh I'm not getting the, uh, I'm not getting the pop-up to get our animals. And it appears as if both triggers are there. We have to go way low. There, only after we squat right in front of it does it pop up. 14 horses here. Hopefully that's going to get an update because that, that is a little... That's a little cumbersome there. Now well, we'll make our way over here to the arable farm, which is farmland ID 57. We have our entry gate. We're going to have a fuel point here at this farm. Some sheds. I like how we've got the farmhouse here. A little smoke coming out of the chimney. That is pretty much this little arable farm. So we're going to make our way over here to the arable farm at 55. Again, we have our diesel tank. Another couple of sheds. A couple of silage bunkers as well. And that's, well, once again, that's kind of it. The northern cow farm. Again, we're straddling triggers. Straddling the fence. 70 cows in here. And we have our water trough. We're going to have our straw point. Our food trough on the other side. Then our manure heap is also inside of here. This is going to be our mick pickup point for milk, I assume. I don't see the slurry point. That's right here. So we got the pipe to give us the indication of slurry. So that over there would definitely have been milk. We have our fuel tanks. We have two three-sided silage bunkers. And then another dealer trigger. Not a maintenance trigger, a dealer trigger. So that means we're going to be able to buy, sell, re buy, sell, paint, and repair. Pretty much everything at that trigger point. We have another sheep farm located right here. 90 sheep for this farm. We have fuel point, a fuel, food trough, water trough. And if we go way down yonder to this lower part of the hillside, we do have a water fill trigger down here. This is going to be our wool spawn point. We have our food trough. But we don't see anything else. We had our food for our sheep. It's as if that is supposed to be another trigger for cows. But none of the other triggers are popping. For that. We have our silo dump and fill point 
for a farm silo here. And then our diesel tank. Uh, it's a little... It's a little depressing. It's a little sad that we don't have sleep triggers at these other farms. Then the last farm we're going to take a look at on this tour is going to be our pig farm. 80 pigs available here. We're going to have our manure heap inside of there. Food, straw, and water. We have our diesel tank. And that is going to be just about it here at this farm as well. Now, remember, I mentioned that none of these buildings are sellable. We can sell the animal pastures, but that is just selling the triggers and nothing else. So, with respect to the farms being customizable, they are pretty much not. And as such, we're going to be in the map zero points with respect to that particular score. So we got our slurry point there, and that's going to be it for this particular farm. Now I want to make my way back over here to the main starting area. And then this is where we are going to start our aerial look around. But I am remiss because we forgot to take a look at our precision farming soil map. So let's go ahead and take a look at that while we're here. Now I have quite an interesting soil map here. Very, very heavy on the silty clay and loam to the north, south, east, and west of the main central area. And the main central area is going to have a nice concentration of sandy loam and loamy sand. We also have a little concentration of that over here to the west and to the north. But a vast majority of this map is going to be silty clay and loam. Let's get a little altitude and we can take a little bit of a look around. We have again our main starting farm here. We have a bale shed that we didn't take a look at earlier in the walk around the farm. Pull up the PDA. And again, if we take this road to the south, we're going to come across the southern cow farm. That is located right here. And then just south of that, we're going to have our sawmill. So we have our wood chip point. And we have our wood cell point. Now this is not a production sawmill. This is just a cell point sawmill. In fact, this map has just two productions pre-installed. That is going to be the BGA and the dairy. Now, with respect to do these utility poles have collisions? Let's go ahead and find out. They do indeed have collisions. So anywhere where you see utility poles that are crossing fields, you will have to work around those. Your hired helpers will definitely work around those. We got one of our cell points located here, just to the west of the southern cow farm. Then it's going to be Springside Stores. Continuing across the southern edge of the map, we're coming over here to our biogas plant. That is going to be between fields 39 and 38. So, with respect to our scoring, we are going to give the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. Because, well, we have two productions built in, the dairy and the BGA. So we have two drive-through silage bunkers. And then we have our digester. We have our dump point for our slurry. And then we have our interactive icon. And we can buy the BGA for $25,000. Now you can see the BGA has been modified from a base game because it now also accepts fermented alfalfa, horse grass silage, 
fermented clover as well. Making our way to the north. We have ourselves the animal dealer. But what is... What is missing? Oh, he's around the corner here. Hidden. Hidden away, we have our animal dealer. So you're going to have to come around the side and the trigger is actually right in behind this animal trailer that is Deco. If we continue to make our way up this windy road, I liked how we have kind of rolling hills here. We're going to come across the vehicle dealer. This is the New Holland dealership that was mentioned in the description. And our dealer trigger itself is going to be inside. Let's go ahead and pick up our Mahindra. Do you have a custom camera? Always nice to see touches like this on maps. But like a bird there. The glass was so clean, I kept running right into it. So here we have around the back where our vehicles spawn. Not the biggest area for your vehicles and machines to spawn. But again, I would say this really doesn't have the biggest fields on the map. So really, it's not that big of a deal. Inside here, we have our dealer trigger. And while we, once again, do not really see it marked here... Let's go ahead and take a look. And it looks like the dealer trigger is going to be inside the building. This is going to be the trigger to open and close the door. And then inside the building, we actually have then our dealer trigger itself. Make our way over here to a small village area. And we're going to have a cell point here on the back in our dairy. So our second production that is available on the map. Very affordable productions. And we're going to accept milk and sugar, butter, cheese, and chocolate. So fairly standard dairy. We have our dump point. And we have then another dump point there. Oh, sorry, that's going to be our fill trigger. Or basically where the pallets are going to spawn. Let's continue to make our way to the north. We have a small buildable site here. It's not exactly the most flattest of areas, but that's, that's all right. The pig farm that we ended our farm tour on. And then coming across the northern part of the map. It's a very, very attractive map for sure. I mean, it's going to score a little low with respect to our scoring because of the fact that the farms are completely not customizable. But, you know, it's a very attractive map. So then we have the cow farm that we talked about. The two arable farms are coming up. One right there. And then one over here. A lot of small fields over here. This is going to be our wool cell point. Gatehead wool. Just south of that cell point. We're going to have another cell point, And this is likely going to be for 
our bales. Oh, sorry. It's our horse pasture. Completely got turned around there. We have a farmer's market sell point hidden inside this shed. And we make our way down the eastern edge of the map over here by the water. That's where we're going to pretty much find the rest of the stuff that's available on the map. So, for example, we have a sell point here at the Gatehead Foods. We have our gas station right next door. We have a cell point here in town, which is going to be the Seafront Rain. And we have another cell point here at the dock. We have a water fill point located here at the boat ramp. And then we have another cell point over here at the southern edge of the dock as well. Now this, this, this takes, this takes some talent. This takes some talent. That's all I'm going to have to say about that. Then we have our last sell point here at the, um, camper park area. That's going to be Gatehead Stores. So how are we going to score this map? Well, this map is a little difficult for, honestly. It looks great. It's going to come out with a very bad score. But again, that doesn't mean it's a bad map. It just means it doesn't play well towards our scoring metric. So with respect to the farms being customizable, well, we already talked about that. We're going to be giving the map zero points because other than the animal areas, we really can't sell anything at the various farms. They're all permanent. So really, the farms are not customizable at all. With respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such, we're going to give the map a full point because indeed we do have production built into the map with respect to the dairy and the BGA. With the ability to sell... All of our base game crops, animal outputs, and productions. Yes, indeed we do. So we're going to be giving the map another full point there as well. With respect to buildings, we're appropriately are using the new texturing technique. This one I struggled a bit on because the vast majority of the buildings, in my opinion on this map, are not using the new texturing technique. A lot of sheds, a lot of the buildings around the farms just looked really 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 flat when you came up and took a look at them and that really stood out to me when then you have other textures like our gravel here right which are clearly not flat and then we come up here to our flat concrete or our flat walls here and there and other places. Now there are areas where we do indeed have the new texturing stuff going on. But there are other areas where we just don't. Like here we do. We do here. But not so much in other areas. So again, I, I debated how much of a point, how little of a point, And I settled on a quarter of a point. With respect to trigger and interactive areas being clearly marked, we're going to give the map half a point there. It would be nice to have seen more indicator markers at other areas. Here we have another one of the water fill triggers here on the bridge with the river, the waterway coming into this 
pond. So that's going to wrap this map up with a score of 2.75. Now we haven't had a map that scored this low in quite a long time, but that does not make this a bad map. It just means this map doesn't necessarily play to the score. Okay. If you don't care about the map, the farm's not being customizable, then it doesn't matter. If you don't care about the not being able to really know where things are until they spawn, then it doesn't really matter. Right? If you don't really care what the buildings look like, just that they're functional, then it doesn't really matter. Right? I like this. I like this deco. It's outside the map boundary, right? Gives the map a little bit of life. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. What do you think of Gatehead Farm? Are you going to be downloading the PC version or the console version? And until next time, happy farming.